What's up everyone, I'm Dave Mack and welcome to another video. And in this video I'm gonna show you the analog heat by Electron. Oh, that screen is dirty. Specifically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I use it in my live setup as a master compressor and saturator. And I'm gonna use a LU meter to really make sure that we AB in the correct way so we can really hear what an analog heat does to a signal. If you like this type of content, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, uh, like the video. If you want to use the preset that I actually use in my live setup, you can download it right here for free. Let's just get started and see what this can do to our music. First we're gonna uh, init preset, so we're gonna wiggle this knob, press yes, init preset, right? So the good thing that we uh, need to address obviously is that I uh, recently did a review of the instant mastering chain by Doctron in collaboration with uh, Stimming and uh, I used, uh, I'm gonna use the same track uh, at the same LUFS reading out, so you can kind of AB the videos if you want to hear the difference in uh, in sound. Uh, and another thing that I need to address is that the, the internal routing of both devices is quite different. So where the uh, instant measuring chain had a compressor first and then a drive circuit um, to kind of control the peaks, basically, in a very transparent way, actually, the analog heat works different. The input goes through the effect and then you control the volume with this preset volume at the very end. That is different from the, the instant mastering chain. So that's good to, to realize, and the, the reason is that um, uh, the, the, the peak control will not be as great. Um, but if we use the saturation circuit on the heat, we can control the peaks a little bit coming in and then compress the signal, which will definitely help and it will uh, provide some peak control, but not as heavily as the insert mastering chain. And uh, why this is important is that uh, uh, in, in venues that you might play, uh, a limiter might kick in when peaks are uh, smashing too loud. Mainly we're going to focus on sound uh, and also on compression, how it sounds, and also peak control, I'll address that as well. Let's begin. This is the track that I'm going to use it's for this comparison. And you can hear it's, it's yeah quite a bit softer than I play live, but reason that I choose this track is because it has a lot of ambience, reverb, long notes in the background and therefore compression will be very obvious and very audible to, uh, to us and uh, you can really hear what analog heat will be doing to the signal. Uh, I got the question in the previous video if I can also AB with a, 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 a track that is a bit harder and has more hi-hats. Essentially you will get the same effect uh, when you play harder techno with a lot of hi-hats. The same breathing happens only uh, with hi-hats. So focus on the long notes in this track and what they do and how they kind of move with uh, the compression that is happening. So first of all, we're going to set the levels first, and this is very important. We need to make sure that um, when we go to the uh, options, input sensitivity, um, and it's already on low. So when I play this, you can see that input level is set to high and you kind of want to play your source and make sure that it doesn't hit above yeah, around 80%, right? Uh, so I need to turn this down a little bit. So now if I turn this on, let's set the drive to zero, the wet to all the way up, uh, the preset volume up. I'm gonna turn it on and you can immediately hear a drop in volume. Yep even more. So that's, that's one of the downsides of the heat, I think. I, I wish they would add an option where you can actually get rid of that extra bunch of headroom that they give you to compensate for the, the, the huge resonance on the filter. It would be nice if we can turn that off, but um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm gonna turn the filter off, we're gonna set this to saturation, and we're gonna turn up the drive until it kind of reads out the same 19 point minus 19.4 LFS. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it like this. Still fairly transparent. Set this to minus 19. Four. But you can see that uh, by setting the drive higher like this, and setting the wet level all the way up, we get quite some boost, which is quite nice. So it's about minus five. Uh, minus five this yeah for now I'm gonna 
match it again. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So using the heat as a compressor, we uh, are going to use the envelope follower. To me, that sounds closest to actual compression. You can you have also other uh, modes, uh, attack release and attack decay. Attack decay being um, probably the closest to uh, what a compressor uh, attack and decay do. Uh, when the attack phase is over, the, the, the release starts. Um, but the envelope follower to me sounds really more like actual compression. It follows the signal very nicely and um, it, it kind of modulates the, the parameter that we want using the input signal and follows the waveform basically and modulates the target parameter that way. Let's try that out. First, what we're gonna do is um, gonna set the follower to something And you don't have to really worry about the trigger parameter in this case, unless you want to use LFO and want to trigger the LFO, for instance. Um, but when you set this mode to follow, th this um, yeah threshold, you could say, uh, it's not really a threshold, but it, th this trigger um, parameter doesn't really do anything other than triggering the LFO if we want. So for the envelope, it's now really using the signal to determine how the envelope is uh, uh, used. So, going to the other uh, page, the default parameter is actually drive. But let's start with um, the preset volume, so we get really volume automation rather than drive automation. For my live setup, I do use the drive automation because I really like it. I can saturate my signal, but do it in such a way that the kick stays clean, which is a very nice effect, I think. But first we start with uh, preset volume. And uh, yeah, let's compress. Um, you can see that we have a base and a width. This is basically your sidechain filter where you can determine what frequency range your compressor is responding to. And here we have an attack and release. So let's start with them at zero, which is uh, way too low, of course. And now we're gonna set the depth and I'm gonna set it to something very extreme so you really can hear what's going on. You can hear that it starts distorting quite <laughs> heavily. And that's because both attack Mostly because of the attack, right? It's now so fast in its um, compression that it actually squashes the signal until it distorts. And we don't want that, so we set the attack a bit higher and the release as well. And now you can start hearing that compression vibe. And I set the depth to something very extreme, so it's very audible what is happening. I'm gonna set the wet level to compensate for this. So it's minus 19.4. There we go. Now I can AB. quite nice compression even with depth all the way to zero. We might want to set the base of the base width filter which is in, sense, in essence a high pass filter to make sure that it responds mostly to yeah the base and not the sub which might overwhelm the way the volume automation is, uh, is applied. And I'm also gonna set the follower a little bit here you can see if I set the follower higher, the depth becomes a bit more obvious. <laughs> so let's set it to minus 12. This is actually so this gives us a lot of range on the depth parameter. So let's now 
you can see how extreme it is. And let's dial that back a little bit. Maybe add a bit of level to So now, see, I'm, I've run out of the wet level boost. The priest volume is max. We also have a dirt parameter that we can use to boost the signal a little bit, which is fairly clean when not using uh, the frequency, but it does add a little bit of dirt, obviously. Because I want it dry for now to be a bit trans more transparent. Third parameter to compensate for the level difference. There we go. Now we're going to AB. heavy compression and we can play with the attack the release so if you set the release too high it becomes a bit dull set it too fast it starts to distort obviously This is quite clean in its compression. You can also use Clean Boost for this. Which is even cleaner. It's still quite heavy, this compression, but I just wanted to, it to show you. I wanted to show you. And now if we use the Clean Boost, we can set the drive a lot higher to compensate for this. adjusting the volume when I change attack settings, release settings, uh, the depth of the, of the compression to make sure that when I AB, I can really hear what's going on. Now let's set it a bit more extreme.
quite transparent, right? With the clean boost, um, you can hear there's a bit of low end loss, obviously. It's less, not as bad as with the saturation mode. You can compensate this with low boost. heavy compression obviously but it's also to kind of show you how it sounds what it can do to your signal now this is the clean boost part of things um, one last thing I want to uh, kind of show is the in a break just did some low end how it breathes with really hear what the resonant release does set it to short stop much breathing going on when I turn it up a little bit here we can really quite dull but I think this is actually quite nice really that emphasizes the groove quite quite well so I'm gonna turn it back to the part where there's more beats Turn up reset volume again. This is the original. nice now let's look at the peak the peaks yeah so when I turn it off the peaks hit around minus 7.4 yeah the highest minus 7.5 minus 7.4 minus yeah and now I'm turning it on LUFS is the same, the peaks are actually a bit higher than when I turned it off. <laughs> so you can see that this is, you know, it compresses the signal, but it doesn't really do the peak control because it doesn't go through a drive circuit afterwards. So because of that attack, obviously we emphasize a little bit the 
the kick, the transient, and then it gets compressed. So the peaks co come through quite loud. Uh, and because there's no drive circuit to control those peaks again, we get this. Now, this is the reason why I myself choose the saturation circuit. I'm gonna leave the settings the same and make sure that the LFS readout is the same as well. There we go. So 7.6 might so be good. And then when I turn it on, there you go. So you can see it's still around the same, but it's not higher than the original signal. Yeah, so that's at least something. Now when I push the drive more. And at the same time, I'm going to compensate with the wet level, obviously. I'm going to, again, exaggerate it a little bit so you can really hear the distortion going on. All right, so that's a bit... A lot of breathing going on, you hear? So now, you can actually see that peaks are a bit less loud. See, minus 7.4 when I turn it off, and when I turn it on, we get minus 8.5, around minus 8.6, something along those lines. But yeah, you can obviously hear the distortion on the kick, which may or may not be desirable. So. Now I'm gonna stop the, the track for now. So you, I hope this gives you a good idea of what the heat can and cannot do. Uh, it can compress your signal, it can glue the mix together. It won't really control your peaks that well. Now the, the thing that I use uh, is actually, uh, for my live setup, I actually uh, modulate the drive rather than the preset volume. And this gives us this effect. The dry signal. Now turn this on. Now the cool thing about this is that we get the same breathing. Again, I have exaggerated it quite a bit to make it very obvious. We get a hint of saturation in between kicks, basically, because of the attack and release settings. We can determine with the release how much pumping is going on and how much of the saturation shines through. You can hear that the kick stays quite clean because of this technique. And now we can turn up the drive to make this even more obvious. You can hear that if you focus on the hi-hats, on the hi-hats, clean, distorted, same breathing happening as with the preset volume, but now in between the kicks it, yeah, things get a bit saturated. So obviously this is, <laughs> this is quite extreme, I'll show you uh, my preset quickly which is uh, also called heavy compression, so it's still quite heavy. Uh, but for my live setup, it, it, it works great. My input signal tends to be a little bit lower, so I'm gonna actually compensate for that and mess up the settings that I used before. But now it's 
20 minus 22 LUFS. Yeah, let's compensate for that. Saturation was a bit too heavy uh, because I, I really make sure for my live setup that I have more headroom in the input at the input stage. Uh, because you know, if I yeah, if there's a groove in my live setup that is a little bit louder, you know, you have to make sure that there's still room for it not to clip. So this is actually my setting. You can see uh, the drive stage, the drive is set quite high. And for the live situation, the wet level is all the way up, the master volume is all the way up, the preset volume is all the way up, and on the filter dirt, if it's needed, I turn that up to give uh, get more volume even, uh, rather than grabbing for the gain knob on a DJ mixer, for instance. One more, one last thing actually, was the, the peak control thing yeah, for my preset. So when it's turned off, we have a peak of minus 9.6. And when I turn it on, we have minus 13.4, right? So this is why I chose these settings because I get quite a bit of peak control this way. And the reason for that is that the drive is set quite high, but that this, this also means quite some saturation on your signal and you may or may not like that sound uh, for my uh, heart of techno sets it's uh, i like it <laughs> so that's why i use it but you can see that the difference in uh, peak is uh, is quite significant as well so it really helps me to push the levels a little bit uh, harder uh, without uh, limiters kicking in or uh, you know, to compensate a little bit with uh, DJs playing before me. The preset that I use for my live setup, you can download at my uh, website's shop, which uh, you can find at davemac.live, and uh, you can download it for free and use it however you want. Um, I hope this video was useful to, s to show you how you can use the heat as a compressor uh, on your master out uh, to kind of compensate for uh, playing in between DJs, for instance, but also to kind of glue your mix together. Um, yeah, so uh, enjoy your heat, uh, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.